Pierre Escobas from Riviera Macro. Uh, today is a beautiful day, it's early April. I'm in my garden in the south of France and you can see behind me it's in bloom already, lots of nice flowers. So this is a good time to do a little tutorial on the flowers and insect shooting and how to generate a nice background. Um, I teach small workshops usually at this time of the year and the first thing I teach my students is how to remove the background from their pictures, generate a nice bokeh, have smooth backgrounds devoid of any interference. So it's very simple, you don't need a sophisticated equipment to do that. I'm going to give you a few tips to, um, to realize those kind of pictures and we'll use flowers today because there are butterflies or dragonflies in the garden yet. So we'll just go and shoot some flowers and I'll give you a few tips. So tip number one, use the lens you have at its maximum aperture. Uh, meaning the lowest value on the aperture ring or at, in the settings of your camera. Um, you don't necessarily need a lens that will open at f1.4 or 1.8. Uh, you don't need that to get nice bokeh on your photos. A lens that opens at f2.8 or f4 is perfect. Um, most macro lenses anyway will open at f2.8 but even if you own a, like a longer lens or a zoom lens that will open at f3.5 or f4 that's plenty enough you can get really nice bokeh if you use the tips that I'm going to give you in this video. So tip number two don't shoot downwards okay if you shoot like this you're going to have a lot of clutter behind your subject. Uh, it can be other flowers, it can be grass, it can be anything. So they will, this will give you a very cluttered image. Your subject won't stand uh, from the background. So go down to your subject level. If I want to shoot this flower, I'm going to go here and now okay, shoot it like this. Because the background now is like two meters away, it completely disappears. It's all blurry because I'm close to the flower and the background is far away from the flower. So always go down to the level of your subject and try to shoot your subject in an angle where you don't have anything behind it. This is true for flowers, but it's just the same for butterflies or dragonflies. So tip number three rotate around your subject. Changing your angle slightly will completely change your perspective and might give you a clean background instead of a cluttered one. Um, if I don't shoot this flower, for example, if I'm here, in the back here, I've got other flowers, leaves, they will appear in my picture, even if I open at the maximum. So to avoid that, I'm just gonna do this, slightly rotate and shoot from this angle. And now my background completely disappears because now the bushes are like five meters away. So just changing my angle, maybe by only 15 degrees rotation is enough to remove totally the background. So whenever you have a subject on the ground, uh, a flower, anything, an insect on a flower, just take the habit of rotating slightly around your uh, subject so you can have different perspective. You will also change the light of your image and some angles might give you even better lighting. So tip number four, if you can, use a bit longer lens. Uh, why? Because uh, if you use a short lens, you have still uh, more depth of field. A longer lens will have less depth of field, and therefore it's easier to isolate your subject from the background. Uh, for example, for the sake of this tutorial, I've been using this Irix 150 macro lens, which is absolutely perfect for this kind of shot. Uh, it will isolate uh, my subject very easily. Um, it's perfect for shooting flowers, for example. And um, if you use, you still can use a 90 or 100 millimeter lens if you apply the tricks I've been talking about, but definitely easier with a slightly longer focal length. Um, this is good for flowers, I was saying. Now, for skittish insects, Butterflies, dragonflies, uh, what I like to do is use a longer lens. I use this one, it's a 300 millimeter f4 uh, fixed focal length uh, from, from Nikon. It's absolutely fantastic for shooting insects because 
I have more working distance. I'm far further away from the insects, so they don't fly away so easily. And the F4 uh, aperture uh, lets me isolate them very, very easily. And it's a very sharp lens also. So I recommend that you use a short telephoto or a zoom if you want to shoot uh, insects. Use it at the maximum aperture. And if you position yourself correctly and you avoid any distracting background behind your subject, you'll get absolutely fantastic pictures with these short telephoto lenses, 200, 300, 400 millimeters. So, tip number five. There might be situations in which you just can't remove the background because your subject is too close. In this instance, I'll take this as an example, I want to shoot this flower. No matter what I do, because I want to shoot the heart of the flower, the background's just too close. Even if I open completely, I'll still have a lot of background. So you might want to fake it sometimes. Uh, in the field or in the studio, you can use these props. These are simply unfocused images, which I took in gardens of flowers. I purposely use in um, metal, not uh, autofocus, and I defocus my lens. Means that I got a blurry picture on purpose. I just printed them on the, on a regular office printer and stuck them on a piece of cardboard. Very simple. You don't even have to have nice printing. This is just laser printing on a regular paper. And it gives you these blurry backgrounds that you can put behind your subject like this. So in this case, I'm using a small tripod with a clamp like this. And that's it now. I have a nice blurry background behind my flower. Okay, I know it's not natural, but in studio, studio situations or, you know, some, some situations in the field, you might want to use this trick. You might want to use a number of different props, so um, different types of images. I've got red ones, orange ones, I've got a whole stack myself, which I use mostly for studio situations. So now I can shoot my flower, and the good thing about this is that you can close up to get more depth of field. You don't have to open at the maximum, so you can get your whole flower in focus. You can shoot at f8 or f11, which give you more depth of field. So the flower will be in focus completely, or almost completely, while the background will remain, of course, blurry because it's, it's only this sheet, okay? You don't, you don't increase your depth of field up to the point where you might have the, the, the grass or the, the other flowers in focus too, which would be annoying, okay? So this to be reserved in cases where you can actually, cannot actually have another angle like this because the heart of the flower you see is like this. Uh, so that's a good example. So it's a little trick that you can use in various situations. I recommend having a, a bunch of these and having always some clamps with you like alligator clamps like this, uh, which you buy in a hardware store. Um, they're very useful to, uh, to clamp things on, on vegetation or supports, etc. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching the tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, in the next session, we'll talk about lighting the subjects, managing the light, and creating light effects in the background, okay? Um, so stay tuned. Please put comments below if you feel like it, and see you next time.